background is very impressive, so I am sure I won't do justice to her achievements. Um, Dr. Anahari uh, earned her PhD in all three cultures and languages uh, from other universities in Tehran in 1996. She's a <coughs> retired professor of the Faculty of Foreign Languages at the University of Tehran. Uh, and she has a scholar of ancient Persian languages and culture, and she uh, has written uh, she has written uh, two books and two anthologies. Uh, and the last, her recent publication includes a lexico lexicography uh, <laughs> of the Zoroastrian <laughs> book of common prayer. Mm -hmm. um, Zandekhorda uh, Avesta, published in 2011. Please join me in welcoming And the title of her today's talk, Middle Persian and Pathos. Okay, thank you very much for coming. Um, okay, because we are a little bit behind of the time, uh, I'm going straight forward to the paper. The paper that I'm uh, presenting today is about the uh, Middle uh, Persian language. And uh, I'm going to start uh, with a short history of language. And uh, then I'm going to give some features of the script. Uh, the grammar in comparison with Old Persian and the New Persian. Also, I'm going to give some uh, uh, details about the books and treaties. Uh, that are available to us in this language uh, and uh, or I may give the little the literature first and then the grammar points it depends anyway um, introducing a language and its different features uh, this presentation will especially be of interest to those who would like to know more about the history of Persian language uh, Middle Persian is descended from Old Persian and uh, is the ancestor of New Persian. Its proper homeland was the area of parts in southwestern Iran, and it was the official language of the local kings, 200 BC to 200 CE, and their successors, the Sasanians. After the fall of Sasanians, uh, it continued to be used by the Zoroastrians long after the spoken languages had become uh, new Persian in following the uh, Arab conquest. Middle Persian is known mainly from inscriptions, documents on parchment and papyrus, the translation of the Psalms of David, the Sadr, David Sadr, found at Torfon, the Zoroastrian scriptures, as well as the Manichaean texts from Torfon, and also a page from Pahlavi texts containing word poems was also found in Torfon. The earliest inscriptions are those on the coins of the presided rulers and on a silver bow, bow uh, from the second half of the first century BC. There are royal and private inscriptions by high officials and travelers, most of them from the 3rd century, a few from the 4th, 5th centuries. The earliest ones were bilingual or trilingual, Middle Persian, Parthian, and Greek. There are inscriptions on objects like silver bowls and seals from the entire Sasanian period. The Zoroastrian and Christian funerary inscriptions 
are from the late uh, from the late Sicilian and early Muslim period. Some are from as far away as India and China. The papyri are probably um, from the six seven centuries. A large um, uh, corpus of the mostly legal documents on parchment from the seventh uh, seventh century has recently surfaced and is currently being deciphered and studied. The Zoroastrian Pahlavi books were written down in the 9th and 10th centuries but contain texts that were transmitted orally for centuries. The corpus can be divided roughly into three categories. One, translations of Avesta texts. Two, texts with religious contents sometimes incorporating translations from the extant or lost Avesta, and three secular texts, including word lists. Uh, so um, the way that I have, uh, in fact, uh, uh, organized uh, this presentation is uh, First, giving the, uh, some uh, information about the literature and then coming back to the uh, language uh, of Pahlavi. So first, uh, when we want to know about the literature of uh, Pahlavi, Pahlavi literature or uh, Middle Persian literature, we should know about the Zand, what Zand is. It's not certain when the Avesta was first written down, but it is generally held that it was during the Sasanian period, uh, the tradition of a writer, Arsa said, Avesa is now rejected uh, by Mary Boyce and some other scholars. The exact meaning of the word Zand is uncertain, but it was probably uh, something like understanding or elucidation. Uh, there evidently existed uh, an ancient Zand in Avesa language and some Avesa glosses have been incorporated in the text they interpret. But the later church, the Zand came to mean, above all, the Middle Persian interpretation of the holy texts, whether glosses or exposition. Today, the Zand of all parts of the sacred Zoroastrian book Avesta is not available, yet the Zand of Yasna, including Gahan, a few Yashts, Vandidat, Khurde Avesta, beside Herbadistan and part of the Rangistan as a work of practical use for priests are enhanced. Pahlavi literature. Pahlavi literature traditionally defines uh, the writings of Zoroastrians in the Middle Persian language and book Pahlavi script, which were compiled in the 9th and 10th centuries C. In the vast majority of cases, these books safeguard older uh, material going back to the Sasanian period, and in some cases, even earlier, so as a chronological approach in them is largely impossible. And this is very important that we cannot follow it chronologically because you know the time that uh, the, uh, these uh, these books are written is uh, much uh, after uh, the t contents themselves the surviving pahlavi literature preserves uh, part of the literary heritage of the late sasanian period with a great prevalence of religious books Quite clearly, this is due to the fact that the compilers and copists of these books are belong to the clergy. Quite important in the development of Pahlavi literature and extremely relevant in the completion of two works, which stand out for the wealth of information they transmit and for the antiquity of the contents, the Dinkar and the Bundahesh, is the Middle Persian Zan to the Avesta. Not all Pahlavi books can be strictly assigned to a specific literary genre, and this is very important. I uh, uh, 
repeat the sentence again. Not all Pahlavi books can be strictly assigned to a specific literary genre. Since some are due to a work of a compilation, their contents can differ markedly. The clearest example is provided by the Inkart. The Inkart, or the Acts of the Religion, is the most massive of extant Pahlavi writings. This is an encyclopedic work of great length, comprising seven books. That originally it was nine books, the first and second books, and beginning of the first uh, of third books uh, was lo uh, they were lost. Uh, through Dinkart eight, uh, Book 8, a summary of Sasanian Avesta, as it was uh, preserved in 9th century, is presented, uh, you know, which contain a description of 19 of the 21 nasks or books. Uh, they use uh, the word nask for the book in Avesta, or the, probably we say today chapters, something like that. Um, a description of 90 uh, of the 21 nasks or books of the Sasanian Avesta. So, uh, Sasanian Avesta had 21 nasks or books, but today we have about five or six nasks or uh, anyway uh, texts of it. The first three books of the Dinkat, uh, books three, four, and five all share a common uh, apologetic, apologetic nature expounding the precepts of the good religion, polemicizing with other religions of the time, mainly Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. Though a few chapters are directed also against the dualistic religion founded by money. The material found in these books seem to be a rewriting of the percepts found in the Pahlavi commentary uh, Zan to the Avesta, uh, inspired by it, but not directly deriving from it. Another important book, similar in style and genre to the first three surviving books of the Dinkar, is the uh, Shekan Gomani Bizar. It was written by uh, Mardan Farrokh Ohmaz Dadan in 19th century, and uh, it mentions the name of Adur Farbakh, uh, Farrokh Zadan, the first compiler of the Dinkar. Uh, I skipped some parts of it because, because of the shortage of time, maybe. Uh, because we want to go to grammar also and the language, so. The largest collection of wise sayings uh, in religion and ethical subjects matter is found in the sixth book of the Dinkat, attributed to the ancients and to various named Sasanian sages. Thanks to the clear and Dar's style, the sixth book of the Dinkat contains the largest preserved collection of gnomic literature in Middle Persian. Some other important texts texts are to be ranged under the Andars genre or the Andars Wuzurk Mehr, Andars Donogane Umaz Yaznan, Andars Khosru Kabadan, Andars Anushak Ruban, Adurban Mahras Pandan, these are the names of the priests living that day. Chidak Andars Puriyot Keshan and Andars Ushnar Donog, Ushnar is uh, a priest also. Uh, so th this is, these were in fact a list of some uh, uh, in fact books written in this genre. Scholars have classified the Dadestani Menogekhrad, uh, which means the judgments of the spread of wisdom, under the Andars genre and in the form of question and answer. If we have time, I'm going to say some more about uh, Middle Persian is rich in a wisdom literature based on collection of nooms, which is uh, also a widespread category of oral literature. 
The norm of uh, prudence and advisability is to make a friend of that man who will be most useful to you. And the moral norm, the best protector of one's duty, are two classes of norms uh, which are known in Middle Persian under the name precept or andars. Naturally, Zoroastrian wisdom literature was transmitted by priests and commonly attributed to sages or to men of authority, such as kings and counselors. These are often cast in the form of answers, answers and questions put by a seeker after knowledge, a disciple or son. In course of time, the less religious andars uh, with all uh, Zoroastrian elements were incorporated in the Islamic Adab literature. Fatalism is the typical of the genre, the sage, uh, the genre of the sage, surveying realistically the human lot, sees chance for man to be master of his own destiny. A fatalistic element is probably part of the non-religious character of many of the Andars. Another branch of wisdom literature throughout the world is the riddle, Chistan. Middle Persian has a literary example in the uh, Madian Yosh Trayan, in which uh, it relates to the contest between Acht, the sorcerer, and the Zoroastrian Yosh, who must uh, answer the riddles propounded by Acht or lose his life. Did you understand it? The, the, the contest? He resolves them all and act failing to answer his counter riddles so dies instead. There is no internal uh, evidence of date, but mo both Yosht and Acht are mentioned in the Avesta. So whatever the period of the written Middle uh, Persian redaction, the kernel of the work is likely to be old. Riddle texts have also the elements of contests. The Derakhte Asurik, the Babylonian tree, is a text in Middle Persian redaction of a Parthian original in verse. It concerns a contest over precedence between a palm tree and a goat. Uh, that finally the goat wins over the uh, palm tree and uh, uh, last time there was a, a presentation about a contest and uh, yeah uh, this is uh, in fact uh, one of the examples of uh, contest genre in uh, uh, Middle Persian. This contest work is also a catalog poem listing the qualities of tree and animal. Therefore, it belongs to wisdom literature, being intended both to sharpen the wits and to give instruction. Two texts expound uh, the cosmological theories of the Zoroastrians, one whose content uh, contest uh, seems to be more ancient is the Bundahesh. Uh, the other marked by the personality of its author is known as Vizidagi uh, Hoye Zadesparam. Zadesparam is the name of the priest that uh, wrote the book. The Bundahesh is a cosmological work written directly in Middle Persian but based on a detailed knowledge of the Avesta corpus. Two versions of the work which have come down to us are the Iranian of Greater Bundahesh, which contains uh, 30,000 words, and the Indian Bundahesh contains roughly 13,000 words. Both the name Bundahesh and the name Zand Agahi, the another name for Bundahesh. 
uh, used for this text are conventional, deriving from the first paragraph of the text. The subject matter of Bundahish can be shortly summarized as follows. One, the primordial creation. Two, the nature of the world and its creatures from the beginning to the end of time. Three, the mythical history of the world. The selections of Zodis Param or Vizidagi Hoi Zodis Param are a cosmological work written by Zodis Param, brother of Manucher, the head of Zoroastrian community of Fars and Kerman in the second half of the 19th century. The selection are more uh, unitary and coherent uh, than Bundahish. Okay, I'm going to skip some parts. And then we come to uh, three texts can be assigned to the eschatological and apocalyptical genre. Uh, these are the Ardabi uh, Raznamak, the Zande Vahumanyas, and the Jamas Namak. Ardabi Raznamak, the book of the righteous Viraz, uh, describes a voyage in the afterlife. The priest Viraz drugged himself in order to release his spirit and discover for his community the faith of the dead. When I was reading this part, I remember uh, our mayor, uh, Ford, <laughs> maybe he wanted to go to the other uh, world and <laughs> that's why he drugged, anyway. Uh, so he, uh, the priest Viraz uh, drugged himself in order to release his spirit uh, and discover for his uh, community the fate of the dead. In his travel, he sees the joys of paradise and the tortures of hell. When he returns after seven days, he relates uh, his vision to those who have washed beside his body during the time. Some saw in his work a source of Dante uh, divine comedy, but seems not to be the case, at least not directly. Ardo Viroz Nomad has proved uh, the most popular of all Zoroastrian works uh, with verse and prose translations into Persian, Sanskrit, Gujarati, and from them renderings into European languages. More properly apocalyptic are the Zande uh, Bahumanyas and the Jomas Nomad, which both contain uh, prophetic elements represented in the first work uh, by uh, Zoroaster himself and in the second by Jomas. So if we have time, I'm going to continue explaining about these two books also. The last work which uh, should be mentioned belonging to this genre is the Dadestani Dinik, uh, which contains Manucher's answers to 29 questions on uh, miscellaneous subjects about the role and functions of priests, good and bad issues, destiny of the soul in the afterlife, ritual and religious law. This genre seems uh, to have remained alive in the following centuries, and echoes of it can be found in the famous episode of Rustam e Farrukhzad in Ferdusi Shahnameh. Uh, only one category of Sasanian poetry, the narrative poem, survives both in its own right and as an element to be phrased in the later literature. Yadigar uh, uh, Iran is uh, an epic celebrating the uh, Kianians uh, was linked to, with the religious history of this uh, mythical dynasty. Only one fragment uh, of this poem survives uh, in its original verse form namely the uh, Ayod Gare Zariran or Memorial of Zarir. Uh, this tells of the battle for the faith 
between Vishtasp and the pagan Hyunans uh, in which his brother Zarir perished. Similarities in style show how much Ferdowsi owed to this old epic tradition, which is still living without doubt in history. During the late Sasanian period, Khuadai Nome, Book of Kings, was composed. This great chronicle survives uh, mainly in Arabic derivations and less directly in uh, and uh, less directly in Shahnameh. Naturally, in these uh, Muslim redactions, the Zoroastrian elements is reduced to a minimum. Uh, but it can hardly be doubted that the original was the work of priests. Although the history of Iran set out through the succession of her kings, dynasties and events were, uh, were shaped on a Zoroastrian pattern. Compilers of the Khuvadai Nameh drew on wisdom literature, providing each king with an enthronement speech in the Andar's tradition. In the prose work compounded from Pahlavi material uh, from which the Shahnameh derives, a pre sasanian legend of genuinely Persian character is evidently incorporated. This is a romantic account of Ardashir, the first, which replaces the more factual version of the official chronicle, chronicle. Fortunately, the Pahlavi original of this survives of this survives under the title Karnamag Ardashir, Book of the Deeds of Ardashir. This is a short prose work, simply in a style, probably written in Pars towards the end of the Sasanian period. Karnamag contains uh, some historical details, but its uh, generally romantic character has been explained with legends in Cyrus the Great, is still current then in Pars. The last, we came to the last part of the uh, literature, the last but not the least uh, treaty which is wholly Sasanian in matter is the Vizarishne Chatrang, or Chatrang, which describes how the game of chess was sent from India to Khosrow I as a test for Iranian wits and how the wise Buzurg Mir both solved it and invented as a counter challenge uh, to the court of the Indian king the game of Bakamun, Tahdenar. The Indian sages couldn't explain the game. So he returned back to Iran with abundant tribute and gifts. So uh, we finish up with the uh, literature and uh, I can uh, give you, uh, in fact, the, a list of them. Oh. Yeah. No, it's not that. It's not that. Okay, that's it. Yeah. Here is a list of the books that I already mentioned and explained for you.
Middle Persian texts are written in scripts uh, derived from Achaemenite, uh, Aramaic, or Imperial Aramaic. The Persian variant of the Aramaic script evolved in Pars in the late Parthian period, as can be seen uh, from coins. There is a clear change at the end of the second uh, century CE, and the standard form appears under Ardashir I's older brother Shapur. An advanced form of the script is seen in the Sauter manuscript, uh, while in the earliest funerary inscriptions, we have the cursive forerunner of the Pahlavi script used in the later funerary inscriptions and the Pahlavi books. The final stage of the script is found in the documents of papyri and parchment. Transliteration and transcription system. In Pahlavi, the same as other extinct languages, transliteration and transcription systems are used. Transliteration is the orthography of the actual spelling as seen in the inscriptions. Transcription refers to actual pronunciation of words. Throughout the history of Pahlavi studies, many transliteration and transcription systems have been used. This is due to two facts. The correct interpretation of the Pahlavi orthography didn't become known until the inscriptions and the Sauter were fully deciphered. And the actual pronunciation of Pahlavi didn't become known until the discovery of Manichaean texts. Now I'm going to show you some. Uh, okay, this is in fact, the first column is Pahlavi uh, alphabet. Pahlavi script, which is written uh, from right to left, is a variation of Aramic script. The so-called book Pahlavi consists of only 14 distinct characters, while represent all the basic imperial Aramic alphabetical system. Therefore, some of these characters represent several sounds which is the main ambiguity and complexity of this script. For example, in book Pahlavi, the character which is used for N or N is also used for V and R and capital O. Capital O because uh, in, uh, I explain for you later about the aromograms. It's used in aromograms. Uh, the character G De and Ye have one single character, and E and He have the same symbolic sign as well. So let me show you here some. Okay, this is my uh, beautiful handwriting. Uh, okay, here as you see, this is uh, in fact uh, uh, this. Uh, symbol of character is used for ge, de, and ye. And this uh, character in Pahlavi script is for v, re, ne, and capital O. And this uh, symbol is for e and he. In Pahlavi, which is a cursive script, the letters also have variant forms when combined, and in certain words, they uh, take on special forms of the shapes of other letters. For example, ye equals d, d can represent b, or z like the word yazdan or god. Z is not shown in the writing of the word, but the shape of ye or de can be seen instead. So the letter Z, which does not have its own shape, 
is transliterated by an underbar Z. Okay, as you see here, uh, this is the word Yazdan, and this is the same as this, is Ye, and this is, there should be uh, something uh, which cannot find here, but uh, it is this, and uh, then here we have uh, this one, and also this one, and then this part, is this and this part is this so it should be yeah there again there for example a uh, like here and then this one and then but it is uh, it is a uh, red yes done so this is not uh, a symbol for Z. Okay? So, so, uh, it is uh, the word, uh, yeah? Okay, so, so we can continue anyway. So, um, the letter Z, which is uh, used in this word, uh, comes with Z with the uh, under uh, bar, uh, we put an under bar uh, for the words, uh, for the letter Z. Aramiograms, Okay, we continue then. I hope it comes. Aramiograms in both Pahlavi as well as uh, the inscriptions, uh, there are a large number of more or less faithfully uh, rendered Aramaic words. It's also called ideograms or heterograms, or in 